Welcome to the Change of Fin Podcast. This is Gerard Uselli here. We are on episode 21. This has been such an adventure to really ensure that our community is in a fight for change. And in that way, we're always going into our personal change itself. And our next guest is no exception to the rule. This person is very great in the Muay Thai industry, been making a great name for himself. His name is Julian Anza. Julian, how are you today? I'm fine, brother. Thank you for having me on the podcast. I appreciate you. Absolutely. So we'll get right into it. A question that I love to ask all of my guests on this one is what your childhood was like growing up. My childhood was, um, my childhood was good. I can't complain. My parents provided a lot for me. You know, my parents were immigrants, so they came over here from Africa and they made a way for me and my brothers and sisters. So, um, you know, I had everything a child could need. So salute to my parents for that. Absolutely. And it's been, it's been an astounding thing for any person growing up to have both their parents in their lives. It really builds a family structure. There's a balance of environments as far as what a mother and father provide within a structure of how the children grow up and everything. So I'm curious, based on like maybe some sports that you've played, how did Muay Thai come into your life? Uh, that's a great question. So, um, Prior to Muay Thai, I was a dedicated football player. I played football f- probably for a decade, from Pee Wee all the way into high school. Um, when my football aspirations didn't work out because of my school grades, I wanted to do something that would, you know, keep my interest while keeping me fit for football. So I wanted to do something that was going to keep me fit for football, and I found martial arts. I actually started with MMA, you know, Conor McGregor specifically piqued my interest. And as I delved deeper into the realm of MMA, I found other fighters and I found the sport Muay Thai. And, right. you know, I liked it and I wanted to get into it. So I immediately researched my nearest Muay Thai gym on Staten Island. And I found Staten Island Muay Thai, which is now Legion Muay Thai. And as soon as I got into it, I immediately forgot about football and I wanted to immerse myself into the realm of Muay Thai. And here we are now, six years later. So. Interesting you say that because with Muay Thai and then versus your football career previously, what's kind of like the adrenaline rush as far as making contact with people, as far as being on the field in a football setting versus what it's like to actually be in the ring? Do you you kind of like anticipate a different level of confrontation? Um, That's a great question. So um, they have similarities, but they have the differences, right? I think the key thing that is attractive to me that both sports presented was, like you said, the adrenaline rush, more specifically, the um, the opportunity to be in a very competitive environment, you know, with, um, I guess you could say physical damage involved. I don't specifically go for the physical damage, but I am a competitor of the highest order. So, um, but the difference is in football, you know, you have 11 people on the field at one time. So you have 10 teammates to take up for your, for your mistakes. Whereas when you're in the ring or in the octagon, you do have a team, but once you step into that ring or you close the octagon cage, it's just you. So whatever mistakes you make, those are the mistakes that you have to um, reap the repercussions of. So it's definitely the the competition that excites me the most about both sports. And in that case, what was kind of like the first time you were really hit? Like, especially in Muay Thai. Like, what was kind of like that experience like for you? And did it kind of push you more to do it? Hmm. So that's a great question. So prior to Muay Thai, I did have um, fight experience, not of the professional sense, but I was in a couple street scuffles. So I walked into it thinking I knew what to do. But once I was around people who actually knew how to fight, and when I say actually know how to fight, I meant people who were actually trained and they, they didn't fight as a, an emotional reaction. They fought for the love of the sport and they fought more as a game. I realized how much I couldn't fight. And that for one made me want to learn so I could be more like them. Um, the first time that I got hit, um, there were so many times, like you go through so many growing pains, but if I can elaborate one time, it would probably be the first time my coach gave me a good leg kick. Um, your perception of fighting is so so different when you get into the realm of martial arts, when you realize the type of damage that you could do to a person and in the different ways you could do it. 
I always say your perspective on fighting is different. So that was just one of the many eye openers throughout my experience over this six years. And I, and I learned something new every day. So, you know, it's always, it's always something like that that happens on your roller coaster of martial arts. I cannot agree more with that. And kind of adding to that point, what do you think is a misconception about professional fighting in general? Oh, a big misconception about professional fighting is that it's a sport that um, inherently needs malice or that it's a sport or it's a profession that you have to be a malicious person to engage in. Ever since I've engaged in the martial arts community, I've met some of the nicest people that you can imagine. And it's one of the great, greatest communities and one of the most inclusive communities that I've ever experienced in my 24 years of life, life thus far. So um, it's one of those sports that obviously it is inherently fight, um, violent because it's fighting, obviously, but the community consists of great, great people. And these people are just nice, you know, and they're just loving people. But we just, you know, love to punch each other and kick each other in the face sometimes. So <laughs> that's just what it is. And how do you think it's kind of changed you as a person in your adulthood so far? Oh, it's definitely changed me in multiple ways than one. It's helped me mature in many ways. One of the main ways that I've changed is, like I said before, my perspective on fighting is so, so different. Um, I always say when you understand, when when you've experienced martial arts and you've you understand what you can actually do to people. It makes you want to avoid that situation because you have a newfound respect for that type of situation. So, you know, before I used to, even at one point in my life, I probably might've had a tough guy persona. I might've thought I was a tough guy, but ever since I've gotten to martial arts, one of my main things has been to avoid street fights at all costs because I know, I know how bad it could be, you know, because I actually fight for a living. So that's one of the many things that's, help me learn and grow. So just kind of like a scenario based question that's a follow up. Let's say when mm -hmm. you're fighting somebody and whether you win or lose, what's kind of like that camaraderie, like knowing how inclusive the community is in that way. Do you feel like you, it, do you feel like it's kind of always the sense of, Oh, uh, you know, we just beat each other up, but no big deal. Let's go out after stuff like that. Well, absolutely. And it depends on the person. You know, people are competitive, like myself. It's something that I've had to learn to to do after I've, you know, engaged with someone to just, I'm not going to say just be cool, because you can just be cool. Like I said, you can't just go out with people and stuff like that. But for me, it was specifically like I knew if I lost a match, I would personally want to rematch. So we can be cool, but, you know, I want to rematch. So, like I said, for me, you always leave it in the ring, you know. Whatever, whatever you want to do to that person, it's within the confines of the ring. And the moment the last bell rings, then whatever it is that you feel in that moment is gone. And once you step out of the ring, it's like, you know, back to brotherhood. That person, you know, I always give my opponent a, a high five and a hug after the match because it's always love after, you know. Absolutely. And more of a generalized question in this approach. If there's one thing in society that we should fight for overall – what comes to mind? Hmm. So there's many things in society that we should fight for, but if there's one thing that we should fight for, it's we should fight for understanding, you know, uh, especially nowadays because we're in a world where um, everybody has something to prove, but no one is striving to understand. So if we could try to understand each other more, especially those that we disagree with, I feel like, this place would be, you know, our world would be much better in that sense. I've, I've always said it takes some time to be a devil's advocate to grow an angel's wings. Right. Right. I agree. That's a nice thing. And also in that retrospect, kind of within that sense of change, what is the biggest change you want to see for yourself this year? Mm, that's a great question. Well, there's a lot of changes that I aspire to see in myself this year. Um, I hope to continue to grow as an adult and a martial artist and to continue to become independent as a man. Um, I'm working towards a couple of goals right now, like I'm finishing up my degree and things of that nature. So as far as change goes for the year, um, I just want to finish my goals. I don't see – I do see changes, but, you know, I can only go as – 
the status quo of the land is. You know, we're in a semi-lockdown situation right now. So I just aspire to keep doing what I got to do. And I'm going to change as needed. So, yeah. Sounds great. Well, I want to thank you very much for joining me today on The Change Within. For those who want to check us out but never had the chance to before, you can check out The Change Within podcast on Anchor, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Julian, much appreciated for everything today, and have a great rest of your weekend. You too. Thank you for having me, brother. Absolutely. Like, share, and subscribe, guys. You got it.